everyone, it's been a little while but a new video. This video is about timing, the importance of timing when you work with watercolour. We are going to create a little simple landscape like this in which you will practice and discover how important it is to let a wash dry for a certain amount of time. So the time from the moment I apply my wash and then interact with it is very important for me as an artist. I always observe how wet or how shiny the surface is before I step in and change things. Okay, so we are going to practice this with our um, little landscape painting. So I, I started with just drawing a straight line using a ruler or a bit of cardboard. I'm using a HB and what I'm doing is I'm just basically making up a silhouette in really light colours of a row of hills that's in the distance. And what I did with this painting is I just drew little legs, so I've called these table legs. So with this painting, we start off with our lightest tone, and I've used a paints grey and a primary cyan. Something close is fine, and I've created this wash here, so a lighter tone. What we do now is, with a reasonably sized brush, we put a nice flat wash down to start our painting. Pay a little bit of attention to the top of your line because that's your silhouette so that will still show up. We are also going to use and play a little bit with a sharp pencil to scratch in some lines into our landscape. Okay, it's time to swipe up the paint. You can see it's not quite dry, but dry enough. And I swipe it up right from the bottom to the top of the page. And you can still see the silhouette of the hills nice and clearly shining through. So that's our step one. We need to let this dry just a little bit by itself or use a hairdryer to speed up the process. So while that's drying, I'll keep working with this puddle, with that colour, but all I'm doing now is adding more paints grey just to make it a touch stronger and a little bit more primary cyan. But I don't want to go too dark too soon, I want to go in a step up from this colour. So this new tint should be a little bit darker than the previous one, which it is. So I'm all ready to go for my next layer once this is dry. Okay, we're ready for our second layer. I've tested my color. I've made sure this is perfectly dry and I'm applying my second layer and I'm going down a little bit from the top. So what we want to see is our previous layer and I always work from left to right so I have control over my wash if I go from left to right in one go my paintbrush will get drier and my paint will dry up you can see my brush handling pointing towards the top and to do a nice straight line I've Change my brush so I have control over my straight line. And that's my second my second wash. So I need to let this dry again. Let's say another two to three minutes, or if you're in a cold area, maybe you need to let it dry. It's for you to learn to observe and when to interact with it. Some great 
grabbing my big brush, I control the amount of water in my brush, and I'm a bit more precise where I'm putting this brush because I don't want to lose the bottom line. And I stroke it only this far, not all the way to the top. And I play with that a little bit. I'm going down a bit lower and I'm pushing it up a bit higher. And that's my second layer. Okay, I'm ready for my third wash, which I've created that tint for. And I'm using a smaller brush because I want a little bit more precision. And I'm thinking outside the box. I'm going to start here. And I'm overlapping that a little bit. And again, I'm working from left to right, instead of going all the way from left to right there. Because this way I can control how wet my wash is. And I'm putting in my leg, and I'm working my way from left to right. You can see how dark it looks at the moment, but when watercolor dries, it tends to dry up a lot lighter. And here too, I'm just going outside the box. And this is my third wash. So this one I'm letting dry a little bit longer because it is important for me to have these lines sharp. If I interact with it too soon, I'm washing away these sharp lines. So this is my last layer and it's a darker color I have mixed and I'm just using a smaller brush and I'm going aside the box again and I'm just going and keeping this layer quite low on my painting. So under this color we have already three other layers. And I'm just putting a little bit of a lag in here too. So it's a really nice and simple, beautiful way to create a landscape that gives you a sense of distance because you are working with tints and tones. The stronger the tone, the closer it feels to you. The lighter the tone or shade, the more it recedes, the more it feels it's away from you. And that's how you can create depth in a painting on a flat piece of paper. Okay, that's our last layer. I'm going to let this dry up by itself. So I won't interact with the brush because I feel I need a little bit of shape up the front. But what we'll do is we apply a little bit of sandpaper to distress the surface once this is dry. Okay, so now everything is nice and dry. So I want to distress that surface a little bit with some sandpaper. So I'm just pressing it down firmly until I can see. It is stressing the surface. A little accident, but hey, I think it's actually quite nice. So, there we go. A simple tonal landscape. So, this is our result of our exercise. A nice, simple landscape with only four colors. And because we are using the fact of timing, we created lots of subtle, soft tones as well, which are so important in a watercolor and create a lot of atmosphere. 
So if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe to my channel to be updated on many more videos to come. These classes are all about contemporary watercolor. So it's using watercolor in a contemporary way, thinking outside the box, the opposite of traditional. Enjoy!